Okay, welcome to Flow. We are looking at um, global sea surface temperatures. Across the front here is the days of the year, and we're looking from 1980 to 2023. And the height is the temperature in Celsius. And you can see that things are getting warmer. Let's spin this around so we can have a little bit more understanding of what we're seeing here. So now we've brought 2016, 2023, we've reversed this line here. We're also showing the uh, mean, which is the white line, and we're showing the plus and minus two standard deviations, these two gray lines. So we can see that these last few years, we are seriously outside the norms of, of the prior history in terms of the sea surface temperatures. Filter from 2016 to 2023. So we're just going to ask ChatGPT to start to manipulate this uh, swarm for us a little bit. And you can see that 2016, which was the last El Nino year, was really warm, quite a bit warmer than what was happening in the past. And then we see here in 2023 that we've just taken it kind of off the charts here in terms of the anomaly from the norm. Let's switch to another data set. This is the anomalies of the Northern Hemisphere land temperatures. So the average is this line, this grid down the middle. Each dot is a month and the dates go all the way back to 1850 to modern day. And you can see that all of the older dates were cooler. And here in the most recent months, most recent years, when we have the really outstanding warm temperatures. But notice 2016, all these spikes in 2016. And that, again, associated back with the El Nino of 2016. Put this on a 3D radar chart. Let's go ahead and spin this around, maybe get a different view of it so we can um, see it in this case. So I'm going to put it on what we call a 3D radar chart, also known as the tornado. It's really interesting to look down into time here. And around the circle is each month, month one, two, three, four, five, to 12. So January, February, and the maximum temperatures here have been called out. You can see that 2016 was significantly warmer than the rest of the curve. Let's take a look at land temperature anomalies um, from 1950. You can just see that we've been moving up over these last years and we've colorized it based on the warmth of the South Pacific Ocean, which is the El Nino La Nina. So you can notice that the moderate La Nina um, that we've had for the last couple of years have probably had a mitigating factor on our global temperatures because we go take a look at that strong El Nino. When was that? 2016. That date keeps popping up, right? What a, what a crazy year um, that was in terms of global temperatures. And let's just look at only at the Oceanic Nino Index. Maybe we'd like to see, understand what that is. What is the Oceanic Nino Index? What we're gonna do is have it build a conversation in 3D space for us to understand this, uh, this particular metric of climate. It is um, the sea surface temperature anomalies, deviation from the average sea temperatures. It helps us define things about La Nina and El Nino. We can get more context about any particular data point. Let's go ahead and select a node here and say, tell me how this affected Mongolia. So we're going to use ChatGPT's general knowledge of, and it will go ahead and ripple in here about telling us about the El Nino. Um, it caused Mongolia to experience an unusually warm and dry conditions, leading to severe droughts, and it exacerbated Mongolia's existing environmental issues, such as desertification. It's really exciting to be able to have access to either the world's information or your own uploaded documents that would enable you to um, gain context beyond the exact uh, data point you're looking at at any point in time. Let's finish out this demo and bring these data sets together. So what we're looking at here, we've gone back to global temperatures and on the depth axis here, we've added the oceanic Nino index, so warmer closer to us is warmer, farther away is cooler. See the very strong El Nino, the relationship between the, the fact that the warmest sea temperatures affected the uh, 
global land temperatures. And you can see that we've had this cooler period these last few years. And that's really the rub. We've had this signal of rising temperatures, but if this La Nina has been cooler and mitigated our global temperatures, what happens when we have another El Nino? And that brings us to the kicker, which is the last step. This is global sea surface, sea surface temperatures, but it also includes what's happening in the South Pacific. We are definitely heading into an El Nino year with the most dramatic sea surface temperatures we've ever experienced. And the um, scientific consensus appears to be that we are heading into the warmest year for the planet that we've ever seen. Maybe it'll last into next year sometime.